For more than 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter in our community. From our studios in St. Clair, you're watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Well, the uh, month of May is moving along. We are glad that you are joining us once again. We've got a very interesting uh, show lined up for you. We've got some, some information on a uh, dog show coming up in uh, the end of May in, uh, at Goodles Park. We've got information on the YMCA and also the Barn Theater up in Port Sandlack. But more importantly than all of that stuff is Jerry Mason. Nice Hi, to Paul. see you, Jerry. Welcome nice to back to the uh, Focus Set. You are here today to talk about the second annual uh, Cars and Kettles with the Salvation Army. Talk to me about it. Here we go. Um, <laughs> we're going to have... Uh, Mercedes-Benz is coming, the Mercedes-Benz Club of America. Wow. So they'll bring all kinds of old Mercedes. Um, Envy Automotive Group, of course, is a high-end and exotic, so I would expect that Mike Kassab will bring a Lamborghini or a Rolls-Royce. God only knows what he's going to do. He brought a Mercedes G-Wagon last year. And then the Suburban Collection is mm -hmm. bringing a Maserati. They'll send a Maserati up just like last year. Then uh, we'll have some old cars, some antique cars. I think there's a 132 coupe coming, uh, a hot rods, and, and so different people are bringing different kinds of cars. Okay, we know the cars are coming. What's the event and where is it? The event is at the Salvation Army Citadel on Saturday, May 18th from 9 to 11 a.m. Okay. All Easy right. Easy to get to, 2000 Court Street. Okay, in down in, in Port Huron yep. along 24th Avenue there. So the cars are going to be on display until noon, and then what happens? Well, if you display your car and you register, you're invited to lunch at the River Crab, and then you're invited to visit the Will St. Clair Automobile Museum in Marysville. That ties it all together, doesn't it? Ties it all together because car people, especially people who show their cars, tend yeah. to be enthusiasts. Yeah. And we take this for granted in Michigan, but we have cars in our DNA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everybody who's watching has somebody in their family who's either worked in the automotive industry or a relative or themselves mm -hmm. and so it's in our DNA. Mm -hmm. uh, so that I, this is the first year you've tied the museum to it. No, we did it last oh, year. Did you do we that did it last, last year? year? The okay. sun finally came out last year when we got <laughs> to the museum. We had 42 degrees and flooding last year. Well, uh, I don't want to say anything about the rain. Uh, just, we've had so much of it this year that amazing. Uh, this is such a good idea. The uh, 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 Salvation Army does stuff all year long for everybody and a couple times a year the public gets to do something for them and, and come and support this kind of a project. Uh, is there an admission fee or anything like that? Admission's free. Uh, okay. In fact, Neiman's Market is providing the donuts, the bagels, the coffee, Pepsi beverage. You'll be sending over juice and orange juice and water and those kinds of things. There's no charge to come. And you're welcome to make a donation, but it's it's not required. You're welcome to bring a car to show, but okay. but you're not required to pay to register it. We we would like people to make donations, but most importantly, we want people to come to the Citadel to see that we're there, that we're busy and working and helping people all year round. You know, we've been serving the community now, this community, for 135 years. That, that number is just un unreal. You know, I learned a statistic about the Salvation Army. You haven't heard this before. We help a person <laughs> every 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, now I have not heard that one before. Yep. We, we always say we help people without discrimination. That means we just help people. We don't judge them. But we help a person every 30 seconds. The, uh, and the, the major, one of the major supports of that is the kettle that we all know and, uh, and love and hear it at Christmas time, but, but you need money 12 months a year. We support the community 12 months a year, so we need support back from the community 12 months a year. And yes, this community, by the way, is very generous. Mm -hmm. St. Clair County, I mean, our Rotary Club mm -hmm. always ra raised $30,000 mm -hmm. last year for mm -hmm. the Salvation Army. We have a very generous community. We, know, we might not be the richest community in Michigan, but we're probably the most generous. Mm -hmm. Very good. Good, good group. Well, this is a, a becoming, this will become a bigger, bigger, and bigger event every year. Uh, you can win a weekend lease on a Maserati. Talk to me about that. Well, that was something we did for fun. Uh, Suburban did that. The Suburban collection has Bentley, Rolls Royce, Maserati, Lamborghini, Aston Martin, Bugatti. Karma. 
Karma. They've got and Stryker. Oh, they got crazy cars down there. So they said, Jer, how about a Maserati? I said, sure. Who's going to say no to a Maserati? Right, right. So they they sent up a Maserati Levante. They're bringing another one up. Troy Auto Care is going to bring it up and deliver it. And then what will happen is is whoever shows their car gets entered to win a weekend lease. Last year, Wayne Wolf won it. Uh, Wayne Wolf, a kid I went to high school with, showed his red Corvette, and he won the weekend lease of the Maserati Levante. That'd be fun. Good for him. Oh, Good they, for him. They're very fast uh, <laughs> and very loud and, and, and very luxurious. So we, we would love the support. We want people to come out, though, and be at the Citadel and just have fun. I think it's going to be special. That there's, there's people coming all the way from Wisconsin. We had the Jaguar Club last year. I mean, it, there's going to be some interesting cars. There's going to be a mix many, of domestic. How many cars did you end up with last year? Last oh, year we had figure. eight cars due okay. to flooding. Yeah. Because we can't, the supercars couldn't be moved because if you've ever seen a supercar, they ride They're, low to the ground. Right. So we had a problem. Our supercars were all flooded in. We couldn't move them up. So we switched. Mercedes can run in any kind of weather. The Germans pride themselves on our cars will run in 140 degrees above or below zero. They don't care. Mm -hmm. Even my old Roadster's got a ski rack mm -hmm. on it. Okay, fine, you know. Right. So they switched and brought up a uh, Mercedes G-Wagon because they can run in any kind of weather. So if we don't have flooding, I think we're going to have between 25 and 50 cars. We could have more. The state police sent a 1957 cruiser last year. This year they tell me they are bringing a 1975 interceptor. Mm. Because apparently the state police keeps old uh, cruisers mm -hmm. that the troopers have had, and they maintain them as part of their antique and oh, classic. Oh, that's great. So we will have one of those. Um, I'm trying to remember all the different people that have contacted me that tell me what they're bringing, and some of them I've never heard of before. You know, <laughs> so. But it's all for a good cause, it's all for charity, and it's all for our community, and we're the only ones doing it in the country. This is a first. Uh, it'll probably catch on and you know, go, go nationwide, I wouldn't doubt. Uh, it's Saturday, May the 18th, starting at 7.30 in the morning. Cars are on display and sponsor exhibit area is set up uh, from 7.30 to 8.30, then 9 uh, until 11. Cars will be on display, and then everybody goes to lunch at the Rivercraft. Yep, if you're going to show your car, we need people to arrive between 7.30 and 8.30 because we want to get the car staged. The public is invited to come at about 9 o'clock, mm -hmm. and 9 to 11, They'll be there for their cars and coffee and donuts and bagels and juice. And uh, I think we're going to have a live radio broadcast. We'll oh, see. Good. That's good. coming together. And uh, come and enjoy it. And then if you do show your car and register and want to do the lunch, you're welcome to do it. Well, Martha Collins at the River Crab says she will, she will feed. I just got to call one, her. Give the, her one and on, the one and only. She's the best. Um, and it's all Saturday, May the 18th. And if they need more information, where do they go? They can go to Cars and Kettles on Facebook. Okay. And it's all there, right on Facebook. They'll find it. Okay. Jerry Mason's Thank you. his name. Nice he to see you. Always is involved in community stuff. That's the kind of guy he is, Jerry Mason. We'll be back with our next guest in just a minute. A friend by the name of Denise Brooks has returned to the world famous Focus set. Nice to see you. It's Denise great to see you. is a very, very busy person. Up at the uh, Blue Water YMCA, you're the president and the CEO, and you have not been here on Focus for a while, yep. uh, a good while, and we thought we better get you down here and find out uh, what's going on at that beautiful facility of yours, and you're, you're treating so many people so nicely, but we don't want to hear the story about it. Uh, tell me what's going on. So, well, the first thing, the big thing right now is our Open Arms campaign, which is our annual fundraising campaign. Um, and we would like to target about 11% of our budget every year for wow. fundraising. Um, and what that does, it allows us to do things like Safety Around Water, which is a free mm -hmm. water safety program. Mm -hmm. It's a multi-session program, really designed particularly in an area like this to make oh. sure that kids know the basics of, you know, how do you float, how do you roll, how do you get to the side or the shore. Yeah. Um, there's a specific set of competencies that are part of the program. Last year, we had some support from Cargill and some other businesses. We actually took it on the road. So we were down in Marine City yeah. and offered it free of charge in Marine City. We were in um, Memphis. And then we were at the Court Street Pool in Port Huron for a couple of sessions. And we're looking to do some similar programming we'll this do that summer. Again this year. Yep. Good. Yep. And that's made possible through philanthropic donations. Yeah. yeah. So 
Uh, that's part of your open arms program. It is, program. yeah. Program. Uh, yeah. What other things happen under the umbrella of the open arms? Well, open arms helps fund things like our Live Strong program for cancer patients. We just started that last fall, so it's part of the nationally recognized evidence-based program. It's a 12-week program for cancer patients. Um, an amazing program. We have nationally trained um, wellness coaches mm. that are part of the program. It's a one to four ratio. So if you're part of the program, you're going to be one of with three other people working with a specific coach for that 12 week period. Um, and it's really designed to help people that are on that cancer journey start to regain their strength and regain their abilities. You know, we mm -hmm. all know that's a very debilitating process to go through cancer treatment. So we're very, very excited to be able to be offering that to the community. I just heard the other day uh, on one of the radio stations or television stations along the way that the results of cancer are so much more positive than they were uh, Absolutely. before. More people are recovering yep. and there's more uh, things that are, are happening that uh, the numbers are, you know, if you get cancer, it's not a death certificate. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of progress with a lot yeah. of different yeah. kinds of cancer, you know. I but mean, they still need support. Absolutely. Absolutely, because it's still a journey, you know, the, yeah, the, yeah. whether it's radiation or chemo or a combination or surgery, um, being able to participate in something like the Live Strong program can be a Our mutual benefit. friend, Deb Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. came, comes in here every month, and she came in, and what, two years ago and sat across the table from me, and at the end of the interview said, oh, I've got cancer, and I don't know what's going to happen, but she kept coming every month, mm -hmm. and she would wear the hat, the yeah. the scarf and and it was, she would relate the story and it was so wonderful i think it was so supportive of her to support other people absolutely. that have taken this tra this travel absolutely and we got to see her around the y all the time yeah too. yeah yeah so that was a good and thing. uh so you need it you need outside help you need in, inside yep. help so that's a wonderful part of your yep. of your product uh you have other other programs that are, that are new we do well, we have other programs that are new, but also supported by the Open Arms Campaign. Okay. We have our Catch Kids Clubs. So okay. we have several elementary schools that we do after school programming five days a week. Um, and it's all around healthy eating and physical activity. So we get kids, we have a chance to have a healthy snack. They talk about the nutrition components. We do some fun mm -hmm, things around mm -hmm. nutrition. And then they have you know, 45 to 60 minutes of moderate to vi vigorous physical activity because one of the things that is we all know is that obesity is a, an epidemic. Correct. Um, and what we're trying to do is take kids in the elementary school and really teach them early what's healthy eating, what's physical activity, get them engaged in different sports mm -hmm. um, because we want them to be healthy for a lifelong journey. Okay. So. Um. You want, we brought along a video. Do you want to bring? We did, a, sure. Uh, and and this Peter. is this is a video that we did last year, um, and it really highlights a lot of different programs that we have, and really speaks to you know the why is so much more than a gym and swim. And then after a video, I'll tell you a little bit about one of the people that's in the video. Oh, okay. Okay. If Peter will run that for us, we'll uh, enjoy the video. Who's the one who can rise above? Take a chance, do it all for love and no regrets. Up ahead, there's an open door, and I gotta find what I'm looking for. And I'm on my way to make all my. That's a great video. It is a great the video. The water looks very inviting. The, it's a uh, lot of fun. The activities, yeah. people smiling. Uh, yeah. It's good, good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. So one of the stories, um, the young man that was in part of the video, Hank, um, has been a part of the Y for a long time. He was part of our ASD program um, for children with autism and mm -hmm. other disabilities. 
um, ended up going through our swim lesson program, became part of our porpoise club, and then has been competing with our blue water otters. Oh, wonderful. Um, and wonderful. has just been a, such an amazing story to yeah. watch that yeah. progression yeah. over time and that opportunity to participate in something like that. Um, so that's, that's really one of our feel-good stories. We actually had Hank and his mom came to our um, alignment day in January, which is our all-staff kickoff mm -hmm. meeting for the year. And it was, it was really cool to hear from them mm -hmm. what a difference that that had made. How many employees do you have now? Right um, we have about 174. 174 yeah. people yeah. supporting the yeah. Y. Wow. We have Not 17 sites that we offer programming throughout St. Clair County. Um, we have a site, actually, we do a couple of class, or what, five, six classes a week here in St. Clair at the Methodist Church. Okay. Um, what kind of, what kind of it's classes are en those? Enhanced Fitness, which okay. is targeted, um, helps with our right, arthritis, mobility. It's really, de it's an evidence-based program designed to help with balance, strength, and um, flexibility. Okay. So we all need that help as we get a little bit are older. You, do you look for volunteers still? Absolutely. And what would Absolutely. those volunteers, what kinds of jobs are you looking for? They can do anything from being on our board of directors or on our committees to rocking babies in our child care to wow. welcoming members at our welcome center, coaching kids and wow. sports. There's all kinds of opportunities. Okay. So, and, and then your Y, Blue Water YMCA of Port Huron is 24-7. No, we're not. You're not? We're, no, we're open during the week from 5 a.m. till 9 p.m. Well, 5 a.m. is 24 for me. <laughs> I'm still on a pillow. Yeah, we're not, but we're not open 24-7. <laughs> and then we're open on the weekends But you're open well. a lot yeah. of hours. That's yeah, what are. I was attempting to say. Most, most people can find a time. To yeah, you're right, 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 right. So, yeah. All right. Uh, did we cover all the new programs? Um, I, I don't think, think so. What was it? We had Enhanced Fitness. We're doing some work. Um, there's another program I can't mention yet, but you'll be hearing okay. about. We're okay. waiting for okay. a formal announcement. I was hoping to have been able to say something today. No problem. Um, but we're waiting for the funder to make the announcement on that, which will be very exciting for kids. I think really the big thing is just continuing to reinforce that we're not just a Port Huron-based organization. Um, you know, we serve people yeah. in St. Clair and St. Alac counties, and when you start looking at the numbers, we serve one out of every eight people in St. Clair and St. Alac counties. Um, so our reach is tremendous, about mm -hmm. 8,500 kids a year, which is the size of Port Huron Area School District. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a tremendous reach and we have lots of opportunities to be involved as members, as volunteers, as donors, um, and be a part of the great things that we do. Yeah, well, you've, you've been there, what, five years now, six, six ten. years? Ten. Ten years already? Can you believe it's been ten yeah, years? I believe, yeah, I believe, okay, ten years. And I can't believe I've been here 20, and, or 20 plus. Uh, time does go by, but it does. but you love what you're doing, and that comes through to the to the staff and the whole place is is such it's a amazing. remarkable facility with the the lo the wonderful support you had when it got built, and that continues. Absolutely, absolutely, and we're very fortunate. You know, yeah. we're um, we are a nonprofit organization, obviously, and our focus is first and foremost what we can do in youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility for our communities mm -hmm. that we serve. Good. Have we missed anything? No, I think that's People good. People should write a check and send it to Open Arms, right? That would be a wonderful thing. Ah. Or you can go online to our website and hit donate. Okay. And if they need more information, uh, they just go to the, uh, Blue Water. BlueWaterYMCA.com. Or you com. can give us a call, 810-987-6400. And they can volunteer there or, Absolutely. or take up a, a program themselves or yep. do, do, uh, do volunteer work. And you don't have to be a member to participate in our programs. Okay. So okay. you can just come and sign up for a program and give us a try. All right. Denise, always a pleasure. Thank you, Paul. Good I seeing you. Uh, we'll be back in just a second. Welcome to another, no, no, I, take two. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like one of the dogs. I get trained one way and I can't change. Okay. Uh, five. Four, three. Joining us now is uh, the president of the St. Clair uh, Kennel Club, and he's got some information about a wonderful show that's coming up out of Goodles Park. Richard Lawless, welcome to the Focus Set. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet uh, you, Paul. You've got uh, good credentials with the people that you uh, that you uh, work with with the the St. Clair Kennel Club. It's a, a good organization. Jeannie Frank's in it, and a lot of other good people. Uh, talk to me about the Kennel Club and uh, where it is and what you do. 
Well, it, is, it encompasses the whole county of St. Clair. Okay. We usually meet um, in the area of uh, Goodles Park, um, sometimes at restaurants, uh, lately a lot at the Dorsey House. Okay. happens to be good, our meeting good, place. And we meet there location. the first Wednesday of every month. Okay. And it is open um, to people who want to be uh, involved in a dog club, learn about uh, dog things. And this spring fling that we're putting on in um, May, uh, May 18th and 19th uh, coming up, happens to encompass a lot of the working part of the dogs. Not so much the beauty, it's the ability to do rally, agility, okay. barn hunt, and things like that. So that's what we're trying to get people involved with and having the public come out and enjoy and able to run their own dogs through it. The only thing that we would require that you come there with your rabies proof okay. so that we don't bring any dogs that are unvaccinated. Is this for all breeds? Uh, yes, for all breeds and for non-registered breeds either. Okay. Uh, you've had these shows before in St. Clair County. How, how many animals show up? How many uh, handlers? That well, kind of this, this show is more of an obedience. And then from obedience, there is all the different factions that I just read off. And this one, we have approximately 135 dogs wow. registered. Well, that, that is going to be the working part only. Now, in the, in the fall, when we do our show, it's in the second week of uh, uh, September always, we have nearly 1,000 dogs per day. Uh, per day? At, per day at, at, at the Goodles? Goodles Park. Yep, at Goodles Park, there's camping and everything oh, that goes a, on there. Great there's great celebration. Quite a bit, yes. Yeah, that would be fun. Uh, you brought along some pictures, and if Peter will throw those up on the back screen here, we'll talk about them. So this is the kind of thing that's going to go on the 18th and the 19th? Right. This handler and dog are happen to be doing the rally. The rally is a dog fun event but it's supposed to be able to follow you at all these different points. What you're seeing there is what you must do at the numbered. Um, they can be from left turn, right turn, about face to sit, and or to walk along with the uh, handler. Okay. All right. so, and this is a continuation of the rally. And if, if you can see on the signs, it actually tells you what to do. So okay. it's something that you can practice, oh, I but see. it also tells you the the like discipline that you're supposed to do at that certain area. Okay. So it's to see that your dog's obedient and also that your dog's having fun. Look at that fellow there. Right, now that, that dog is enjoying a, uh, um, a agility trial. And at that agility trial, they're doing a uh, up and down on the, the uh, triangle, they call mm -hmm. it, or the, the angle part. And they have to go through all different all different areas. Many people may have seen them on TV. There was that Bichon that was on yeah. in Westminster yeah. that did it real slow, and that was an agility course. They do all different things in, in through a tire, through a uh, tunnel, up a ladder, and jumping over jumps and stuff. A fun thing that the dogs really enjoy, and it's a way to get your dog to be obedient and also to have fun. Okay, and, what's, and there's the other side of that. Okay, right. yeah. And that, that we refer to as the A-frame. Yep. That okay. they're up and down on the A-frame. All right. Next. And as you can see, the jumps. Now, the, this next um, show this is... This next part is everybody reading their phone on the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sure are. But this lady in the ring, you can see in the ring gates, is actually one of our club members, and she's showing an Australian cattle dog in confirmation. And this is her again, standing oh, and posing. Beautiful and dog. Right, and they're judged against the standard. Yeah. And then the judge is looking at this, uh, her <laughs> and the Australian <laughs> cattle dog. This is all on the dog. All judging is done on the dog meeting the standard. Okay. Now here, here's another thing that looks like it's also rally. And here's one that's scent work. Ooh. This dog is actually going and finding where the scent has been laid under these different blocks. And at different levels, they must find that scent right off. They are there to leave the one that doesn't have the scent and then go to the one that has either the handler scent or they may have a certain scent set up for them. Here's, here's another agility. This, this is really popular. It, it has come on real popular with a lot of uh, people and their dogs. Turning left, turning right. And, oh, yeah. And having fun. Wow, look at the jump. Now, this is, part, yep, this is part of the agility ring, and this is one of the jumps. Now, the jumps are all measured at the dog's withers. So a smaller dog would only have to jump at a small level, and this dog probably being near 18, 20 inches at the wither has to jump at the appropriate height. 
and this I think is a, is a now smell, this is another this is another scent work. This okay. is how you see dogs that you may see the police dogs mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. are actually looking for drugs or contraband. Mm -hmm. They can actually they're actually going to do automotive scent work. Oh, so yeah. the, these people are involved in training their dogs to be able to go out and, and do that. But also it's an exciting thing from looking to help people in a rescue situation or just to have your dog be able to to have the ability to do that. I mean, it's the owners wanting to, to enjoy that type of sport, but also know that their dog has that ability. There's a big show uh, every March down in Detroit. Uh, one of the KC... Uh, yes, it used, to, it used to be in March down okay. at Cobo Hall. Yeah, around and St. That, Patrick's Day. There's right, a, right. And now that's yeah. changed to be in June at the, um, at the uh, show place. Oh, uh, uh, Novi Show Place? Novi Show Place, yeah. But, but, your show, that's that's a pretty huge show. Oh yeah, that and was your almost show is 3, still pretty dogs. good. Yeah, in, ours in is a good number, yeah. but nowhere near the three thousand dogs. And the thing that made Detroit different, the Detroit Kennel Club, is they did what is called a bench show. And all those dogs, when you enter that show, you agree to be on the bench from a certain hour, usually eight o'clock in the morning till five, six o'clock oh, at oh, night. Oh, oh. Well, they're allowed the potty yeah, breaks and yeah. then the show, but that's so that the paying customer that comes in to Cobo Hall can be assured that they're going to see the breed that they want to see and they're going to be on the bench. At a lot of the shows, it's a lot of just show and go. You have to make sure you're aware of the judging program. If you want to see that certain breed or talk to the breeders, you must get a judging program. But they're very much available online. So the show on the 18th and the 19th out of Goodles Park, how will that one be conducted? Well, that's going to be a little different. I'm, I'm looking at my notes because this is the first time the St. Clair Kennel Club has put this on and what we're calling a spring fling. We're gonna do rally, agility, scent work, and showmanship. And some of these are gonna be practices. And the, the practices are to get and see if your dog has the ability to do these things. Now we have an unlimited um, canine good citizenship testing. We have the nose work, barn hunt. There's also another one that people, I, I didn't bring up barn hunt because that is now a uh, way that they actually go in and they hunt the rodent mm. and can actually find the rodent. And there's, there is championships given to dogs that can complete this in so many times, so many seconds, and not be knocked off the scent, meaning that they're gonna, they're gonna travel and follow this rodent through the, the different obstacles that mm. they have until the end. So that, that is the um, barn hunt. Uh, I think I covered everything that we're going to be doing. So what we're going to be doing there is two things. People are going to be competing for titles in the ones that I brought up. And also we're going to have a fun day there too in order to do confirmation oh, okay. as a fun type show to do some of these different ones as a run through to see if your dog maybe has the ability to do that so that you may try to achieve a, a championship in that discipline. It's uh, May the 18th and the 19th. What time does it start? Is there admission cost? What uh, yes, for, for um, well, the, it was pre-entry for the shows that people that are already trying to achieve their championships. Okay. Now, but on the, on the Sunday is going to be the, um, well, there, there's two different days, like, and there's some different fees. For the barn hunt, it's $5 per dog per run. Okay. And on, the, on Sunday, for some of the different um, testing, whether it's trick dog or the canine good citizenship, which is a actual award that your dog can get if it goes through the different obstacles, is going to be $10. So there's a minimal fee, no, no charge for parking coming in, but all the disciplines will have- If I have, don't have a dog and just want to watch, is there a Right, fee? no, there is not. And no, just come out, free. watch, and see the dogs. Yeah, okay. it's free there. Okay. Um, are there going to be like breeders there that will be well, talking, there, showing dogs if somebody's interested? In no, it? not at not at this spring show. In, okay. in the uh, fall show, when I hope to be able to come and explain you, that yeah, too, um, that that way you'll run into the breeders. And it's very important to get online and get a judging program, and that's through InfoDog. Um, and when we talk Info about this, dog? Account, InfoDog, it's called. <laughs> it. And it and you look you at the it. judging program. For instance, if you want to see Bichons. And you look on the judging program, they'll say Bichons will be showed at 10 o'clock. It'll say what ring. So you get there and you'll be able to see that breed that's there and then talk to the people once they're done showing. Usually it's... So wonderful. It really is so wonderful. There are so many wonderful niches uh, for people to be involved and to be... Uh, I imagine you're looking for volunteers. I imagine you're looking for new members in the St. Clair 
uh, Kennel Club. Club. Yep. Uh, is there a website? Uh, yes, there is a website. We're we're all, we're on Facebook at St. Clair Kennel Club, and we are also at www.stclairakc.org. Amazing. I mean, people are into freighters, people are into organs, people are into. It's wonderful. Thank you. Life is wonderful, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. Richard, we're glad you came along, and certainly we'll have you back in the in the uh, fall in the summer to talk about the fall, fall show. show. Great. Did we miss anything? No, I think I think we covered it all. Uh, again, if you're going to bring your dog and you've not been at dog shows, please bring your rabies certificate. And we ask that the Flexley leads not be used, usually no more than a six-foot lead to have your dog under control. Okay. That's the thing. So the, the public can bring their dog to have fun with, and it, it's a done, like a dog social event. What kind of a dog do you have? Well, I have a few. I, I show and breed louchens now, but I'm also a professional handler. Besides being the president of the club, I show different breeds, but louchens are my main breed now. What is a louchen? A louchen is a little lion dog okay. that was bred in Germany as a lady's protected. It's only about 14 inches at the wither, so it's a small hand-carrying dog, and it's cut to look like a lion. So it's, <laughs> its back end is cut, and, and it's up, and it, it gives the appearance of, of a lion. So they call it the little lion dog in England. Well, next time you come, you'll have to bring one. Okay. Richard, very nice to meet you. We'll, uh, we'll have Richard back uh, later this summer to talk about the St. Clair Kennel Club uh, show that will be coming up in the fall. But now we want you to attend the uh, show in uh, Goodles Park on May 18th and 19th. And it's free to admission. And uh, unless you bring a dog, then you've got to pay for him to get into, <laughs> entered into something. But we'll be back with our next guest in just a second. There's been a theater in Port Sound Lake, Michigan for a number of years. The managing director of that theater is with us. Jeffrey, nice to see you. Hi. Welcome good to back see you. to the Focus Show. Thank you. It's nice been a little while. See you. Been a while. Uh, talk to me about the anniversary of the Sand Lake, Port Sand Lake Barn, Barn Theater. theater. Uh, it's our 40th. 40th year. 40, wow. Yeah, 40 long years. Um, and it's a milestone. We're one of the longest running places, theaters in the state that have our own building. Okay, okay. Um, we started out doing one show a year in the summer. And for the first few years we did that. And then we're like, well, let's work on this. Mm -hmm. So then we went to two and then three or four. And now we do six shows. Between, Wonderful. Between Labor Day and Memorial Day, plus a kid show. It's a nice size theater because every seat is a good seat. Right. Uh, you've got a little balcony, a little level raised to it. Yeah, the, the audience are, are raised so because the, the stage is flat. Right. So we have the raked audience. So, yeah, there's really not a bad seat in the house. All the seats are 10 bucks a piece. We haven't oh raised, my God. We haven't raised ticket prices. I don't remember the last time we did it. And we just went from 8 to 10 bucks, and that must have been 30 years ago. People screamed and yelled and said, oh, inflation. Oh, you would have thought we'd set the place <laughs> on fire. I know. <laughs> Now, so 40 years ago, you must have been in grade school. I, uh, um, <laughs> I was a junior in high school when we started. Um, and actually, our tech director, and he's, been, he's the only one besides me that's been there since day one. Our tech director, in, when I was in high school, was my theater slash social studies slash history teacher. He was a busy guy. He was a busy guy and hated me. <laughs> of course, I was a little jerk, but I was in school, right, too. So, right, right. But now we're very good friends. and. Yeah, it's him and I that have been there for 40 years. Well, it's a nice theater. It's a nice evening. And uh, I've been there multiple times over the years. It is. And the building itself, I mean, we do outstanding shows, I think. Um, obviously, we did something right because I've been there for 40 years. But the building itself is 200 and close to 50 years old. Wow. Um, the only thing that's changed is you can see the side there, yeah. the little, the little lean-to. But the building, the main building itself, is the same as it was when it. Well, you gotta have first. a lot of maintenance on it every year. We do some. We got a new. We do have, did have a new roof because it was leaking. So yeah. if anybody's been there, have, hasn't been there for the last couple. It years. It would have been all right for singing in the rain, but nothing else. Right, nothing else. Right, yeah. But boom, boom. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, but we don't leak anymore. Okay. Um, and we, the only thing that we don't have that people ask about is air conditioning. 
because we don't want to add no. a huge thing to it. So some nights it's very, very warm in there. But when the audience hand is out sitting, those little we hand out the things, they use their programs, but yeah. every time the audience complains about it being too warm, I just remind them, you think it's too warm? Add 30 degrees, and that's what we're doing on stage. Right, right. And if you want uh, to raise the $10 ticket price, we can add the air conditioning. We can add the air conditioning, right, exactly. So, well, it's, it's good. Well, you got this, uh, Peter's got this picture up. Let's go through some of the pictures from the stage. See, it's a nice size stage. It's a good size stage. Um, we have extensions on the side so we can go even farther. Um, out to if we need to, mm -hmm. but then there's certain shows that we have to we'd like to bring in to make it more intimate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a show called Visiting Mr. Green we did a couple years ago, and that one made history for us. We get standing ovations a lot, but our audiences are very choosy about what they when they give it to us. I mean, some theaters get standing ovations because, well, every night that they're there, but ours they pick and choose. We've gone whole seasons where they don't get we, we don't get one. It's not that they don't like the show. They're like, it nah, doesn't deserve a standing ovation. But that last one, uh, visiting Mr. Green, we got standing ovations every single night. Beautiful. It was Beautiful. wonderful. Um, this is the from the set. This is mm -hmm. a show called Corpse. That guy there, Justin Mackey, played twin brothers. <laughs> one, he played both roles. He played both roles. One a very proper. Um, businessman and the other brother is a very flamboyant actor who decides he wants to kill his other brother because he wants his money. And he would disappear off to the side there and all of a sudden he would appear as the other brother. I played the major who he talks into killing his brother and then the whole thing just flips and turns and flips <laughs> and turns and it's one of the best shows we've done there. I killed, I actually killed him like five times in that <laughs> show. <laughs> This is a Neil Simon show, Fools. Mm -hmm. um, back when Neil Simon decided he was still just going to do shows to be funny mm -hmm. instead of doing, you know, this is what I need to say. No, yeah. no, no stop it. Just be funny. Right. And this was one of them. Okay. And there's a bigger cast there. We got the cast of characters there. Lots of costumes. Lots of costumes. It's called, it's a funny little thing called Love. Um, I wasn't really involved in this show, which every once in a while there's a show last time didn't do anything direct or right. whatever. But it's very funny. Every one of them was having an affair with somebody else on that <laughs> stage and was married to, I think, somebody else on that stage. <laughs> When's the season this, this year? When's it open? We open uh, the last weekend in May. Okay. And we, we run all shows two weekends, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We change shows every two weeks. Um, the first show we have is called The Annoyance. It's about a guy who annoys everyone he meets. I've met him. Up, yeah, well, <laughs> we all have, I think. He goes to a psychiatrist because he wants to be cured. He doesn't want to do this anymore, but he ends up driving her completely nuts. Goes to another psychiatrist who happens to be the husband of the first one, drives him nuts, and the third scene is the two psychiatrists get together and decide they're either going to cure him or kill him. <laughs> That's a very funny show. Um, and when we're doing rehearsals and stuff, we only get six rehearsals per show. Ooh. Which is, yeah. You gotta Because most places, right, most places are six to eight weeks yeah. of rehearsals. Which is one of the reasons why I think a lot of our, a lot of people are afraid to audition for us. And I can understand that completely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But once you do it, you get it in the blood. That's right, right. And you come right. back, and you come back, and you come back. Yeah. And at the end of the season, we have people ask, how do you do that? How do you do that? Don't ask me that. We just, we just did it. We just did it, yeah. right. So, all right, so we're opening in May. Uh, we're going to continue every uh, uh, two weeks. Every two weeks. We've got some great shows coming up. We're doing on Golden Pond. Okay. Um, people forget how funny that show is yeah. because Norman Thayer is a smart aleck. <laughs> he's very sarcastic. He's very funny, but it's just a great show to be able to watch an octogenarian love story is right. what it is between the two. We have a kid's show. We do a kid's show every year. This year it's Game of Tierras, which is kind of a throw off from Game of Thrones. All the people in the cast are between the ages of six and 16, I think. Um, another one of the f my favorite shows we're doing this year is called Bathroom Humor. All takes place in a bath, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It all takes place in a bathroom during a party. But everybody wants to use it for whatever else besides what it's meant to be, except for one little old man. And all he has to do is go pee. <laughs> and nobody will let him and in. And nobody will let him in to do it. <laughs> it's just hysterical. 
Uh, we just had your website up, uh, but what is the website again, address again? Uh, PSBarnTheater.com. Okay. Um, our old one is null and void. We got hacked. Okay. So we shut that down. We just got this one up. We're still tweaking it, but it has the contact numbers and the synopsis of all That's the shows. The um, best bet if anybody wants to follow us and figure out what's going on, get old notices, is follow us on Facebook. Okay, very good. Because we're right there on top of that stuff. Jeffrey, the managing director of uh, the the Barn Theater in wonderful Port Sandlac, and uh, we'll have, have a wonderful season. You know, Thank you. You we'll, need to get up there and see a show or two. We will. We will. Uh, that's about it for this edition of the uh, Focus Program. Thanks very much for uh, tuning in. Until next time, I'm Paul Dingaman. See you soon. See you at Port Sandlack. Thanks for watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Focus is produced at the CTV Community Television Studios in St. Clair. For over 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter to our community.